This is the third in my series of battles videos, in this case covering the Battle of Yordanov. Yordanov, or the Battle of Yordanov, was a Second World War battle fought during the Battle of Poland, which took place almost certainly on the 3rd of September 1939. Just a quick note, um, pronunciation, I really am unable to pronounce Polish words, so my apologies. I pronounced Yordanov uh, as a German would pronounce it, um, and for those who are of Polish background, my apologies. The other thing about this particular battle is that I lack a lot of information concerning it, that is, battle reports, memoirs, etc. So it actually is quite difficult for me to identify even the exact date this battle was fought, because most of the source material seemed to imply this battle was fought between the 1st and the 3rd of September. Now, basically going through the distance the formations would have travelled, and the minimal information I have in terms of, you know, the fact certain formations travelled overnight, etc., I've come to the conclusion this must have occurred on the 3rd of September, starting at 0500 hours. But, you know, am I 100% correct? No, I can't tell you that that's the case. I even found it difficult to identify the exact area that was defended and the formation um, setups, etc., so a lot of guesswork is occurring in this video, but nonetheless sufficient information to allow people to gain this particular battle and also possibly to create um, some additional scenarios which give you a little bit more of a balance to gain than, than what actually occurred. To counter the threat of an impending German encirclement, the Polish command ordered the 10th Motorized Cavalry Brigade, until then held in reserve, to move to the threatened area and block the area of Yordanov and Rabka. Overnight, the brigade was transported to the area. The, the detachment of the Polish units entered combat almost instantly. Particularly heavy fights occurred in the hills to the south of Yordanov, around the mountains of Wuska, where the 24th Motorized Regiment, aided by the KOP and anti-tank artillery, defended the area against the 2nd Panzer Division. The text I just read was copied from wiki, or two sources from two different types of wikis, and in order to try and make sense of it, we need to try and work out where the Germans were coming from, where they were going, and what was happening around it. This map provides an overview of the situation in the southern area. The 22nd Corps consisted of the 62nd, 213th and 221st Infantry Divisions and really was not involved in the battle, although some sources indicate it was. The Corps involved in the battle was the 18th Panzer Corps, which consisted of the 2nd Panzer, 4th Light and 3rd Mountain Division. The Germans attacked on the 1st of September and drove up to Krakow, meeting the Polish defences on the 2nd or 3rd, almost certainly the 3rd, of September. This is another map showing the movement of the German formations and does not match up with the battle reports very well that, as well as making not much sense. While not showing up here there is a road which aligns with this arrow so expect the advances along this line rather than swinging right as shown in this map. The objective was to cut off the Polish forces to the west which uh, does not make sense um, if they decide to swing to the right, but it does make sense if they drive up towards the two dots. Now, the two dots represent uh, Yordanov and Rabka, and the battle almost certainly occurred in between these two locations because we are pretty certain the Germans occupied Rabka by the evening of the 2nd and would have engaged or initiated their attack in the morning of the 3rd. This map, which is a contemporary map of the area and comes from Google or some equivalent, shows the road linking Rabka and Yordanov, with the battle occurring somewhere in between. The red line could represent the front line, which is about a 10 kilometer long front line. I have no idea which road was used, but the terrain around here is rather rough, so the advance must have occurred along one of the two roads that you can see here, or one of the three roads actually. This is a Google map view of the same area. Rabka is in the, uh, well, the base of the area, and Yordanov is, you can see, in the not quite top left, but um, sort of like the top area between the leftmost edge and the centre. 
Okay, this map does show the terrain. You can see there are two valleys on either side of the arrow, arrow each of which is about two to three kilometers wide. Presumably um, there is a stream running through the center, although that's rather difficult to see in this Google map. The formation like a, a formation like the 10th Mechanized Brigade would have had been able to defend either valley, but would have needed reinforcements to defend both valleys, which actually it did possess. Included with the um, 10th Mech was the a KOP Infantry Regiment and one battalion from the 12th Infantry Regiment, and I'm not quite sure which division that infantry regiment came from. This shows a more detailed view of the Polish 10 Mech Mechanized Brigade, which considering its size was well equipped with heavy weapons. The interesting point to note here is that there are two regiments, but each regiment really only consists of a single battalion, so really represent a battalion. Reasonable anti-tank capability, about 437mm anti-tanks. Apparently they did actually get some additional anti-tank weapons to assist them. And the artillery, uh, four pieces of 75 and four of 100. Once again, uh, they did get some additional artillery during the battle. Well, a reasonable number of tanks, and um, apart from some minimal references to the TKS tanks, these did not seem to be engaged very much during the battle. I do not have an um, official TONE for the KOP regiment, but it was probably similar to a standard infantry regiment, less any heavy weapons, possibly apart from MMGs, and perhaps it had the 81mm mortars. These were kind of a frontier levy, I suppose, formation, so would not have been as heavy as a normal infantry uh, regiment. In addition, there was an um, infantry battalion from a proper infantry regiment, which would have had all its heavy equipment, although it didn't really possess that much. This shows the entire forces available to the Polish, uh, broken up by regiment and battalion, and in com a couple of minimal cases, uh, company. I did not mention this in the TONE of the 10th Met, but there is some unusual formations in the sources that I used. An anti-tank battalion consisting of only four guns and an anti-tank company consisting of 18 guns. This was the only source I could find, but I have to assume the strengths may have been reversed. Regardless, the brigade did have a reasonable number of anti-tank guns. There is also references to another anti-tank formation assisting. This was possibly attached to the infantry, which were in the area when the 10th arrived, along with two additional battalions of artillery. It should be important to note, when the 10th did arrive, there was actually a front line of some description, consisting of the KOP uh, regiment, uh, infantry battalion, and also um, the artillery and anti-tank forces that uh, I mentioned just then. On the German side, this shows the structure of a typical light division. The light div division involved on the German side was the fourth light, but I suspect it was not inv involved in much of the battle on the third. Perhaps it got involved at the end, but uh, I suspect maybe this is one formation which swung right. Nonetheless, none of the references seem to uh, mention any of the formations from this division. This shows the structure of a 1939 German Panzer Division, of which the Germans fielded the second Panzer Division in this battle. Based on my reading of the battle reports, this was the division which undertook the bulk of the fighting. There was also a mountain division, however it's unlikely it was in a position to conduct any form of offensive operations on the 3rd of September as it was foot-powered or on foot. Elements of the division did reach the area of the battlefield by the 4th of September, but it was not in a position to conduct any form of fighting. If the mountain division was present, the attack would have been conducted uh, by it rather than a panzer division. I also suspect one reason why the Polish withdrew when they did, which was the evening of the 3rd, was possibly because the mountain division was beginning to arrive and form up. This is a regimental and battalion breakdown of the 2nd Panzer Division, which was more than powerful enough to overwhelm the Polish forces if it was in the open. However, in this case, the terrain was rather rough and the avenues of attack rather narrow. In terms of strength, the German 3rd Panzer Regiment consisted of 62 Panzer I, 78 Panzer II, 3 Panzer Threes, 8 Panzer IVs and 9 Command Tanks. The German 4th Panzer Regiment consisted of 62 Panzer I, 77 Panzer IIs, 3 Panzer Threes, 9 Panzer IVs, and 11 Command Tanks. The German Medium Artillery Battalion could have possessed 
four 10 centimetre kanonens or guns, as well as eight 15 centimetre howitzers. I'm uncertain if this particular battalion consisted of 12 15 centimetre howitzers or the mix that I've just mentioned. Um, my sources are a little bit ambivalent on this. Regardless, it wouldn't have particularly affected the battle either way. This shows a possible Polish position on the evening of the 2nd of September. Note that the woods were basically very rough ground. Actually, the woods in the centre, where the X is, is where I think the mountain that was referenced in the sources exists. I suppose from this position, the formation could lay down fire on either roads in the valley on either side. The scale is one kilometre increments. The artillery could have been placed back in the small village behind it. And as long as the Polish held positions on top of the X, which was the mountain, they could have actually sighted anything they wish, which would have caused the Germans a great deal of difficulty. And I suppose that's exactly what occurred. The, point, the deployment of the forces is a guess, but in principle I think seems quite reasonable. The frontage was, the actual frontage here of the Polish was about six to eight kilometres. The KOP would have been placed in the rough terrain in the centre and could have acted as forward observers for the artillery close behind. The mech regiments, which were battalion strength, would have been divided between the two available paths, possibly possessing half of the anti-tank guns each. The infantry battalion would have occupied the right terrain on the Polish right flank. The Polish left flank was reasonably impenetrable, although if the mountain division was available, it could have been crossed. However, I'm assuming it was not available on the third. The Polish did have an armoured train somewhere behind this position, which they actually used to cover the withdrawal in the evening. Surprisingly enough, the Polish did launch at least one ground support attack during the battle using the PZL-23 light bomber. However, there seemed to be minimal air activity in the battle accounts otherwise. Now for the actual battle progress. On the 1st of September 1939, the 18th Panzer Corps, part of the 14th Army, crossed the Polish border from Slovakia in an attempt to outflank the position of the Polish Krakow Army defending Silesia and West, Western Lesser Poland. The Germans crossed the Tatra passes and assaulted the towns of Szabowak and Nowa Targ. Their orders were to seize the towns of Mileski not later than the 3rd of September, thus encircling the entire Polish army fighting in the area. The area assaulted by the 18th Corps was only lightly defended by a single infantry regiment of the Border Defence Corps. Hard pressed by the combined forces of the 3rd Mountain Division, 2nd Panzer Division and 4th Light Division, the Border Defence Corps, aided by the local volunteers and units of the National Defence, withstood the attack but also suffered heavy losses. Despite stopping the Germans in the vicinity of Nova Targ, the town was taken by the Germans and the risk of breaking through the Polish lines became apparent. It's unlikely the Germans could have taken Nova Targ on the 4th, First, so it must have been the second that this town was occupied. To counter the threat of this German incursion, the 10th Motorized Cavalry Brigade, then held in reserve, moved to the area and blocked the area of Yodanov and Lodapka. Overnight, the brigade was transported to the area and installed its headquarters in a village close behind the main defensive position. The detachments of the Polish units entered combat almost instantly. Particularly heavy fightings occurred in the hills to the south of Yordanov, around the village of Vyaska, where the 24th Motorized Regiment, aided by the KOP and the anti-tank artillery, defended the area against the 2nd Panzer Division. If the battle occurred on the 3rd, then it, the brigade was transported during the evening of the 2nd, and the morning of the 3rd. As the German attack started at 0500 hours, I assumed it was transported in the evening and the troops took up position during the night, ready for the German attack. It must be noted the KOR and infantry battalion was in, a, in the position before the 10th mech arrived, as well as some artillery and perhaps some other minor formations, such as anti-tank formations. The Germans initiated the attack on the 3rd of September, as far as I can work out, at 0500 hours. As with the Polish, I'm uncertain of the exact German um, attack lines, the way they've structured the formations, but it is logical to assume the Panzer regiments took each flank with the infantry and the motorcycle troops in the centre. 
Heavy artillery barrage started at 5am and soon afterwards the entire division started an all-out assault of the Polish positions. Despite heavy, suffering heavy losses, the Polish managed to stop the German assault and by noon the Germans withdrew, losing approximately 30 tanks. This is actually quite typical. The Germans, several times during the Polish campaign, and even in the French campaign, launched all-out uh, tank attacks with their Panzer 1s and 2s, I, I assume, and suffered significantly heavy losses. Now, in France, we know a lot of the losses were caused by 75mm field guns, which could take out the tanks at distance. I'm uncertain what the losses were caused by here. Uh, the Polish certainly did have 75mm field guns, which could have done the same thing. But considering the fact that they had a very, a very generous supply of 37mm Borfers anti-tank guns, I suspect these were the main causes of German losses. In the accounts, we do know the Germans launched three assaults. The first was in the morning. The second was probably at midday, possibly with greater involvement by the infantry, thus possibly a more significant attack in the centre, which is the uh, rough ground, against what the Germans would have probably ascertain were the main um, observation posts for artillery fire coming down on them. It's likely the Germans did gain ground in this second attack and the Polish forces were pushed back. We don't have any uh, data on German tank losses, so I think this is probably going to be a more um, combined arms attack, etc., without exposing the tanks too much early in the battle. The accounts are then noticed in the third attack, third attack which almost certainly occurred in the evening, the numerical and technical superiority of the Wehrmacht was tremendous, and after three failed assaults in the late evening, the Germans finally seized the mountains of Viscoda and the village at its feet. The Poles then withdrew under cover an armoured train. Now, this kind of implies there were four attacks, the last one occurring in the evening. Uh, you know, I, I would strongly suspect that um, from midday right up until the evening, it was just a, uh, a constant German attack pushing the Poles back, and I suspect the uh, comments of the numerical superiority of the Wehrmacht may have been related to the fact the mountain divisions were beginning to appear, and possibly even some formations were appearing in the second, which put additional pressure on the, uh, the Poles. In conclusion, um, in the Battle of Jordanov, the Germans lost approximately 50 tanks and a number of other armoured fighting vehicles. Polish losses were also significant, especially on the ill-equipped volunteer units, which would have been the KOP regiment, almost certainly. Look, uh, my caveat here, my attempts to determine the course of the battles and details of the battles based on a number of unrelated sources, such as wiki and a host of organisational sources on the web and the books I possess. I may well have misunderstood the various comments and placed the battles and thrust in the wrong position. Look, uh, considering the fact that I was guessing the entire deployment and where all the battles and thrusts were occurring, this is almost certainly the case. However, I feel confident that I've generally got the right flow of the battle and probably even the correct, um, if not the exact formation numbers in their correct location, probably accurately positioned the formations where they probably existed during this particular battle. As with um, all my um, battles series of videos, my conclusion is that you can't really use a squad scale set of rules to refight any kind of useful portion of this engagement. This shows the main locations of the various engagements. However, these engagements typically are battalion in size, possibly in some case regiment. There are many encounters which could be refought. However, at this scale, it's very difficult to obtain accurate force mixes for these specific battles. You'd be better off playing a typical points-based game with a force mix allowed by the divisions that were available on the battlefield. Apart from that, there's little point in trying to refight this battle at squad scale, apart from, of course, using historical force mixes. Using a platoon scale set of rules, that is, each element represents a platoon, where the player can actually command an entire regiment, possibly not a full regiment, but almost all of the regiment, each of these markers could easily represent a game. If we're using Spearhead, we could reproduce um, a four-hour conflict with ease, and as most of the regiments involved are known, we could arrive at a reasonably accurate force mix, 
based on, of course, my guesses, you know, which obviously could be completely wrong. However, this is certainly not refighting uh, the entire battle, but it does or potentially does give us some interesting games. Now, if we move up to a company scale set of rules where each player could command a division or possibly slightly less than a full division, in this case, we could absolutely refight the entire encounter. At battalion scale, these force mixes are far too small, so I would not consider using a battalion scale set of rules in this case. Now, the basic scenario that I've described, which is probably one of the best for the Polish using their mech forces, is very much a one-sided conflict. Players could try some creative modifications, such as assuming the Polish position was held by a greater amount of infantry divisions, uh, elements, before the mech arrived, and then assume the 10th and the Warsaw mech were together and involved in some form of counterattack. We would need uh, to restrict the Germans to just the 2nd Panzer Division, as one reason why the Polish pro as Polish probably withdrew was the amount of divisions beginning to arrive. Now with these minor changes we, we could actually end up with um, a, a reasonably balanced and interesting game. The one thing uh, that I do wish to note is if you look at this front line we, we're talking about 6 to uh, 10 kilometres or, or possibly 9 kilometres um, with two valleys uh, each of which was only a couple of kilometres wide uh, the playing area would be rather interesting, and certainly this playing area would consist of a lot of rough terrain and a hell of a lot of woods. You may be asking, why in the hell did I decide to create uh, this video on a battle which I had so little information about? Look, uh, my objectives was to try and find actual historical conflicts in the various campaigns to understand how to build scenarios. And it's important for me to find uh, conflicts which involved mobile forces because, quite frankly, um, with micro-armour, uh, an infantry attack, while certainly viable, no problems, would be a long-winded and rather boring affair. Now, the only battle where the uh, Polish actually had mech, where they had some minimal chances of causing difficulty to the Germans, was this one, which is the reason why I've covered this particular battle report. Anyway, I've completed the video on this subject and I'll leave it up to an enthusiastic gamer to actually create a scenario from the battle, but I must admit it would be an interesting project and possibly I'll consider doing it for myself using um, my one of my core commander sets of rules. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hill, Heimatland zu kämpfen.